Welcome to the presentation on factors of sports injuries. This is a follow-up from your level three where we discuss the extrinsic and the intrinsic. And we're going to go in a little bit more detail about how you classify sports injuries from here. What we will cover. We're going to recap on the risk factors of injury like we've previously discussed in your level three. We're going to look at and establish new wording around the factors of injuries to improve specificity of the injury and the client communication around injury terms as well. So it's all about the client focus. And then we're going to discuss why the factors of injury are often multifactorial and look at a few models based on that as injuries are often caused by more than just one incident or one action. So firstly, what is a sports injury? And I love this quote from Enger Bretson um, from a study in 2012. A sports injury may be defined as damage to the tissues of the body that occurs as a result of sport or exercise. And that just really focuses on just the sport side of things. And in your clinics, you may often see clients that have experienced injuries that aren't related to sport, but to everyday movements and activities that occur in everyday life. So the first thing we're going to discuss is the Munich Consensus. Now this was created in 2012 as a way to provide better terminology and classification of muscle injuries. And initially a study or questionnaire was sent over to scientists and doctors within professional sports teams. And then there was a meeting, a consensus meeting, to create a statement about uh, the new classification. And what they found from the initial questionnaire was there was lots of variety of the terminology used when discussing sports injuries. Um, so what they did, they came together to create a new classification system which clearly defined muscle injuries, which I think makes a big difference when we're talking to our clients if they are experiencing any of these injuries. And we'll focus on this in more detail when we look at the specific types of injuries later in the online learning. But for now, it's just having an awareness of the Munich Consensus, as we'll discuss it and refer back to it throughout your Level 4 learning. But if you do want to get ahead and read it, the link to the journal is in your online learning. And into a recap of the risk factors of injury. So in your Level 3, we discussed internal and external, intrinsic and extrinsic risk factors of injury. So as a recap learning for yourself, I'd like you to pause this video and note down what the differences are between intrinsic and extrinsic or internal and external risk factors of injury. Can you name three different examples of each? Did you pause the video? Let's head into finding out and recapping some of those different examples. So here are the extrinsic or external risk factors and it's often around environment that the client has been experiencing. So we have examples such as contact with someone else in some of those contact or even non-contact sports. Training load and frequency, are they overtraining, are they undertraining? How can that then affect um, or increase the risk of an injury? The weather, if they are doing activities and sport that are outside, how does the heat or if there is rain, how does that affect the risk of injury? And then also equipment and clothing. So what are they wearing and what equipment are they using that may affect the risk of injuries? Here are the internal or intrinsic risk factors of injury. So we have age, gender, hereditary factors response to chronic loading, so how does their body respond to overtraining or undertraining, the amount of movement that they do day to day, the quality of their tissue in the first place, and how they respond to stress. Those are just some of the ones that can impact or increase the risk of injury. So let's look at some possible new terminology when we're discussing the risk factors of injury. So rather than referring to them as internal, intrinsic or external, extrinsic, we can change that terminology to possibly indirect or direct. So an indirect cause of an injury and a direct cause of an injury. And I think you'll agree when we discuss it in this way, when we're discussing this especially with our clients, and I think they will understand this a bit better than suggesting that their injury is, because, is caused from an internal reason, so within them. An indirect injury is an injury not caused by an external force. That's a really simple explanation. So it's not caused by something that's been external. A direct injury can be a direct trauma caused by blunt force, a direct muscular injury known as a contusion. Direct injuries, it can be classified as mild, moderate or severe. 
and may not require the client to cease activities depending on the severity of the injury. So you can see the difference between an indirect and a direct injury. And when it comes to looking at the possible causes of injury, so you're looking at the direct and indirect differences of injuries, there can be many causes that cause an injury to begin with. So the indirect and the direct is an overall umbrella, but there's lots of reasons why injuries can occur. This model of sports injury etiology was adapted from May Reese in 1994. So it's a bit before the Munich consensus. But what I really like about this is it shows those risks of injury. So if we're thinking about either direct or indirect or going back to internal, external, we can see how they possibly can relate or create um, or cause a type of injury. So let's look at each section in a little bit more detail. So we look at the first part, which is the internal risk factors. So those are what uh, the client or athlete is predisposed to. We should look at some of the intrinsic factors we've already discussed, such as age, gender, their physical fitness already, the anatomy, their skill level as well. So those things that the client or athlete is already predisposed to before an injury occurs. And the next part of this continuum is where the client or athlete is more susceptible to an injury. And that's exposure to those extrinsic or external risk factors, uh, such as the teammates' opponents are looking at direct contact, the equipment, uh, the environment, so weather, flooring, things like that. So that's where the client is more susceptible based on those extrinsic or external factors. And the last part of the continuum is the circumstances surrounding the event and that moment in time when an injury may occur. And that's looking at things like joint motion, uh, the client or athlete's range of movement at the time, the situation they're being, that they're playing, their training program at the time, their uh, performance schedule and the match schedule. So all of those inciting events um, can then lead to that injury, but only based on the predisposing factors of the athlete or client and then what they are more susceptible to depending on the location uh, and the training conditions or playing conditions before injury may occur. And I think the main takeaway of the multifactorial model of sports injury etiology is that there is not one single thing that may cause an injury. It's often a combination of predisposed factors, uh, more external or indirect factors, and then what's happening at that particular moment in time. And the last model I wanted to share with you is the Sports Injury Risk Profile by Wise Bjorn Stahl from 2009. We're going to look at this in a lot more detail in the Injury Prevention module, but I want you to be aware of this model as we progress throughout the course so far. What they have done is divided the internal and the external risk factors of injury into more subcategories, looking at the biological, psychological, physical and sociocultural. So it starts to bring in other factors that may be a risk factor of injury, especially when we're looking at the psychological and also the sociocultural as well, which I think is very interesting. And we'll discuss this in a lot more detail in the injury prevention module. But for now, I want you to consider that the risk factors of injury include more than just those hereditary genetic factors, the predisposing factors and the physical, so the environment and the weather as an example. There's lots more reasons why injuries may occur for our clients and athletes. So let's bring it together and discuss why this relates to sports massage. Injuries may not be as simple as they first appear when discussing this in the subjective assessments. Your client may describe what happened at that particular time for an injury, but it's really important for you as a therapist to establish all the other factors that may be causing that particular injury at that time for that client. It's important to spend time finding out the client's history based on that to establish all those potential risk factors of injury. And that's about getting to know your client, their lifestyle and their overall health. And it's important to understand all of the risk factors, which then can help create a more in-depth and specific treatment plan for your client. So the more that you know, the better you are prepared to help your client move and feel better and recover from an injury. Here are some further reading and resources and some of the research that was taken to create this presentation. The Munich Consensus is a link that is in your online learning, so you can click that straight away. But from these, you can head to these to learn a little bit more about the risk factors of injury.